Good evening, good afternoon, Facebook friends. This is really, really intense Facebook Live that I'm going to do right now. And uh, guess what? My hands are shaking, my palms are sweating, and I have a cup here that says, Life is a story. Make yours a bestseller. And I am not sure if I'm going to share with you what I'm going to share with you right now, if this will feel like bestseller, but it's something that I feel really, really compelled to open up around because it is time. It is time to unveil all the curtains and really let you in on a story that has completely defined my life. It has completely defined my past, my presence, and very likely a future. And as I'm sharing all of this, I am really, really trembling. It is so, so incredibly intense for me to talk about this openly with all the depth and all the emotions and I'll very likely cry. Um, yeah. So when I was 22, I met love of my life. I met Hassan, who has been charming and intelligent and smart and playful. And like the second I met him, I was head over heels. And he felt exactly the same about me. Now, as much as it could lead into a love story, the challenge with our love story was that I was married and my marriage was completely falling apart. So falling in love with Hassan somewhat gave me strength to say enough is enough to my marriage and to apply for divorce. And that was, I'm not going to lie to you, it was two weeks of me and Hassan being together, two weeks of our relationship, I have applied for divorce with my husband. And at that time, me and him, we had a son, he was four year old, he was just like a month before his fourth birthday. And when the paperwork hits the kitchen table, uh, my son's father, my son's name is Samir, my son's father decided to kidnap our son and take him by force to Pakistan, which is his home of origin. So I will never see my son again. And I cannot tell you the pain and the darkness and the loneliness and the heartbreak and uh, oh my god i can't survive this space that i went into every single day that i was separated from my son i heard from his father that i will never see my son again that i am terrible mother that i can forget about being mother that I will never, ever, ever be reunited with my son. And I live in this darkness and I live in this despair and I live in this hopelessness for 18 months of my life. Literally from the age of my son from four to five and a half, I know nothing about my son. And the pain and the not knowing what's going to happen was absolutely heartbreaking. And I swear to God, I don't wish this to any mother on this planet to go through this pain where she doesn't know when she will be reunited with her baby, with her child, with her son, with her daughter. And the terror of not knowing. And 
the depression and the no one understands you, what you're talking about. My heart is beating so fast right now because until today, even though it's 12 years later, I still, actually 13 years later, I still know how the pain feels and I still know what it is like to be separated from my son. So for 18 months, I lived in darkness. For 18 months, I live in space of absolute not knowing. And when my son was five and a half, he was brought back to Europe by a law reinforcement, by, you know, proper policies of uh, international law and like really ensuring that a basic human rights, like me being with my son, are taken in place. Now, the day I was reunited with my son, it was one of the most intense and incredibly powerful and emotionally overwhelming day of my life. I was almost like in a state of emotional haste when someone is on drugs. I've never been on drugs, but the, the description that people give you, like a completely different state of consciousness and all my body and all my heart and my womb and my mind were just like overwhelmed with love and joy and gratitude and appreciation. Having said that, my son was distant from me. He has, in that space of 18 months, developed tremendous intimacy block, tremendous distance and kind of mistrust and not feeling safe around me and my love and my presence. So I'm not going to lie. Repairing our relationship and repairing our connection and repairing our bonding has been tremendous amount of work, has been tremendous amount of input and energy that has for many, many years took so much out of me, took so much out of my presence and my energy and my focus and my attention. But without a question, it was a very worthwhile pursuit. Now, the challenge with all of this going through the kidnap and for 18 months being in a horrible space of depression and then being reunited with my son is and was that I got terrified of becoming mother again. I got terrified of becoming pregnant again. So me and my husband, we got pretty much married right after me and my son got reunited. And we got married in 2008. And as we are getting through the early years of our marriage, of course, everyone is poking into us like, hey, when are you guys going to have kids? And family is putting pressure on us and friends are asking. And, um, you know, my son wants to have like a baby or younger sibling. And everyone is just like always talking around the topic of baby and people are thinking that we are dealing with, like with this massive infertility issue when nothing could be farther from the truth. I became terrified of becoming mother again. So what did I do to make myself safe? What did I do not to get pregnant? I got on contraceptive and for 10 straight years, I was every single day having my dose of pill so I don't get pregnant. I suppress all of my biological cycles and I by no means and no option become pregnant because putting my body and putting my psyche into the space when I could be again taken away from my child was the deepest terror and something absolutely unthinkable. Now, very soon into the process, kind of three, four years into our marriage, I begin to, ha begin to get a lot of chronic lower back pain. 
So I was doing yoga and I was teaching yoga at that time. I was teaching self-massage work and I was kind of equipped with the basic understanding on how body works. But then I was someone who teaches others how to live better in their bodies. And I was suffering and struggling with back pain every single day of my life. I would go to therapists and I would go to massages and I would go to physios and everyone has some level of prescription. Everyone has, you know, something they're trying to fix. And guess what? I get better for a day or two or maybe a week, but then I'm back in the spell of back pain. And in 2010, I almost got under surgeon's knife. My back pain got so incredibly intense that even my nerve endings, my sciatic nerve, my pudental nerve, my pelvic nerves got so incredibly irritated, I barely could walk. Now, to top everything off, I'm going to tell you the darkest thing, the thing that I have never said on camera before. The terror that being separated from my son created in my body made sexual experiences with my husband a nightmare. I could not be present in my body. I would escape to a completely different space where I was not connected with my husband, where I was in a space of psychological shame, of psychological pain, so I could somewhat get through what me and my husband are experiencing. I was terrified of surrendering. I was terrified of sexual intimacy. I was terrified of being present with my husband with whom I love so deeply. And deep inside, all I wanted, desperately, is to have a baby with him. But then another massive part of me was absolutely terrified. My body was in pain. My sexuality was in pain. I was going from therapist to therapist. And I was pretty much falling apart. I remember one day in 2010, I was having a session with my mentor online and I was sharing with her all the pain that I'm going through and how I'm just not able to feel okay in my skin for five minutes a day. And as I'm describing to her all this terror and all this pain and all this suffering, suddenly my husband walks in the room where me and my mentor are having an online session and I begin to have like a massive nosebleed, like unbelievable nosebleed, unstoppable. I can't take care, take care of myself. I can't control anything. It's like an absolute massacre. And I felt so ashamed that here my husband is coming towards me and he wants to hug me. He doesn't know what the hell is happening to, my, to me and to my body or what I'm doing in the session and suddenly I'm having nosebleed. My mentor is freaking out in the session. Is like, what is happening to Dagma? It's like, is she being abused or something that she's having this, this nosebleed? And I did not understand my body, what is happening and what I'm going through that all of this is like... I have no control over myself. I have no control over my, my, my life. I have no control over how I feel. And that very night, after I got handle of myself, after I found some space and some poise where I can center myself and my nose got under control, I said, enough. Enough of this pain, enough of this suffering. I cannot live like this anymore. There are only two options. I either live or I die. I either live or I die. There are no other options. And there was this whisper in my soul, this craving, this desire for having a baby again, for healing whatever 
I went through, whatever my body is going through, and holding a small baby and creating a baby with my husband because I love him so much. So that very night, I begin to study and research trauma, healing trauma and releasing trauma from the body, releasing trauma from the nervous system and truly unraveling the core wound so much so, so I can feel safe in my skin and I can feel safe around intimacy and that will create a foundation for me stepping into pregnancy and motherhood. Now, if you know me, you probably know the happy beginning. If you don't know me, the happy beginning is that in a space of six months, I have completely healed and integrated this terror around pregnancy and motherhood. I have healed deepest parts of my mind and of my nervous system. And my body, my mind and my soul said absolute yes to becoming mother and absolute yes to starting a new life. And guess what? This week is very special because my and my son's baby is going to be one year old. This Thursday, our son is going to be one, which to me really creates this incredible reflection of the work I have done on myself and the deepest pain I have overcome and the fruit and the celebration and the beauty that came out of this in this form of our beloved, beloved Rumi Khan, which is, and who is growing in a space of love. He was, we like to say, me and my husband like to say, Rumi was conceived in love. He was uh, created and really grew in my womb in a space of love. And this entire 12 months, he was brought up and he grew in a space of love. And for that, I am incredibly grateful and I'm incredibly proud. And my own experience and my own story made me decide one thing and one thing, that no other woman has to go through this pain, has to go through this suffering ever again. So what I learned about trauma, what I learned about nervous system, what I learned about healing this terror inside of us, I begin to work with a woman from different walks of life so they can truly get to the core of their trauma and restore their aliveness, their worthiness and true and meaningful connection to life. So one of my clients, she is living in Australia and she and her husband, they are married for 10 years. And what trauma has done to her is it put her in a chronic state of fear around sex and intimacy. So much so that 10 years marriage, she and her husband, they never had sex. And through our time and through our work together, we are building safety in her body and safety in her sexuality so she and her husband can actually have a baby and start family together. Another my special client, her name is Evanly, and Evanly is based in States. And Evanly has been suffering with a chronic low back pain, chronic neck pain for on and off for the last seven, eight, ten years. Now she has been uh, in a state where every single week she has to go for a chiropractic adjustment in order to make sure that she is okay and she's literally able to get herself through everyday life and through her job and through her responsibilities. 
together by going after trauma and building safety in her body and her nervous system, she has completely flipped the switch and she no longer needs a weekly treatment with her chiropractor and instead she knows exactly how to take care of herself so she feels good inside of her body. Another client of mine is someone who has experienced tremendous sexual trauma and because of sexual trauma, she has developed a lot of pelvic issues, chronic pelvic pain, endometriosis, uh, premature aging of her fallopian tubes and ovaries. And it also created a chronic terror around stepping into like emotionally based intimacy with a really, really good partner. So our work is truly about healing and releasing her sexual trauma so she can feel safe around emotional and psychological intimacy. So what I am doing right now is taking these really powerful concepts that I am sharing with my one-on-one clients and I'm putting that in a free three-day challenge when I'm literally going to share my best and most powerful secrets on what I have done to heal from trauma and what my clients, whether that's around lower back pain or sexual trauma or not feeling safe around sex and intimacy, what they are doing to actually release the core wound, heal and unravel the trauma from their system so they can feel safe in their skin They can feel safe around intimacy and they can truly, truly flourish both in their health, but also in their relationships. So this special three-day challenge is called Intimacy Ignited. And this is an absolute yes for you. If you're someone who suffers with chronic lower back pain, chronic sacrum pain or chronic pain in your midline, like a digestive issues or real struggles with constipation and inability to let go. This is for you if you are carrying pain and wound like myself. If you are a woman who is very, very scared of becoming pregnant, of becoming mother or what will happen to your life when you and your partner or you and your husband actually step into the role of new parents. This is for you if you're consciously aware that, yes, I had sexual trauma in my life, I have been sexually abused, or maybe I have the instance of rape in my life, and I've already done a lot of healing. I've already done, you know, yoga and meditation and counseling and psychotherapy, but I'm still in this place where I don't feel safe in my body. This is the best place for you. This free three-day challenge is also incredible. If you're ready to feel safe around being naked, if you want to feel safe around intimacy, and actually experiencing profound physical, emotional, and psychological connection with your partner, with your husband, or with your lover. Now, I am so much believing that every single woman on this planet deserves to know how to release and heal trauma from her body. And Sometimes people, when they like heal, say healing, they hear healing trauma, they are like, oh God, this is so heavy. This is like, I don't really know if I want to go there. But let me tell you this, trauma healing and true trauma breakthrough is not about getting into the darkness and like not knowing how to get out of there. True trauma healing and the desire around healing from trauma is about aliveness because when you release trauma and when you allow safety in your body to be breeding and living experience a breeding living reality of your system 
guess what? Your life becomes vibrant. Your life becomes magical. There is this profound sense of aliveness that's running through your body. That's like you look through the window and you're literally seeing the world through a new lenses, through a new colors. So this is for you if you're ready to step into this and once and for all feel safe inside of your body. So in the challenge, in this free three-day challenge, you will first and foremost learn how to recognize trauma, how to recognize whether you are carrying trauma in your body or not. And the misconception around this is people think that they are traumatized only if they did have experience of sexual abuse or rape in their life. But so many women carry unrecognized sexual trauma in their system, sexual trauma in their body, things like abortion, things like miscarriage, things like invasive surgery to the midline, things like what happened to me being like separated by force from my son created the deepest, darkest form of sexual trauma in my system. And inside of the challenge, you will learn to recognize exactly how you can see and how you can feel and how you can know whether trauma is present in your body or not. In the challenge, you will also learn exactly what does it take to feel safe in your body. Do you know how many women have no idea how to feel safe in their system? They are trying to, you know, buy insurances or be super jealous at their partners or create like these safe, quote, safe and safe containers so they can somewhat feel okay and in control. But all of that can fall apart. Your true safety and your greatest investment in yourself and in like feeling okay in life is creating safety in your nervous system and is not until women truly embody safety that we can heal the epidemics of chronic low back pain and chronic pelvic pain and endometriosis and all of this infertility crises. Feeling safety is the alpha and omega around both healing trauma, but also restoring your sexuality. So in the challenge, you will become a master around feeling safe inside of your system, so much so that sexuality, intimacy, choosing the right foods, choosing to exercise, being kind to yourself is almost like a reflection of who you are on the inside. So if you want to get your hands on this really exclusive free three-day challenge called Trauma Breakthrough Challenge Intimacy Ignited, you want to write challenge, the word challenge in the comments below, and I will send you a private invitation link to the challenge that is starting in two weeks time. It is starting on 4th of December. And once again, in the challenge, you will learn the best secrets that I normally give only to my one-on-one -on -one clients, what it takes to truly heal trauma from the nervous system and step into the new way of being. Now, without question, healing trauma is something that I am very, very honored to share with the world and very passionate about because there are so many women that suffer in silence. There are so many women who are chronically anxious and depressed and disconnected from their body and terrified around intimacy and struggling with chronic low back pain and terrified like myself 10 years ago around being pregnant and being mother again or they are disgusted or ashamed by sex and all of that is connected to a trauma living inside of the body. So 
share this invitation to a new way of being with your sisters, with your cousins, with your friends, with your colleagues. This video is public. It's open for sharing. And my intention with this challenge and my intention with this sacred space that I'm going to create in the Trauma Breakthrough Challenge on the first week of December is to serve 500 women. I want to serve 500 women to truly, truly, truly help them feel alive. This is what healing trauma is about. Aliveness. 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 I want to help you feel alive. I want to help your sister, your mother, your cousin, your friend to feel alive. And together we can make it happen. So comment the word challenge on this video. I'll send you a private invitation to this exclusive Intimacy Ignited Trauma Breakthrough Challenge. We are starting on the 4th of December. And what you're going to learn and what you're going to explore in this process is nothing short of revolutionary. You're stepping into holiday season and your aliveness is waiting for you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I am truly, truly honored to make trauma healing and trauma resolution and trauma breakthrough available for women who are ready to step into true space of healing and aliveness.